We all love our animals in our households and we want to keep them safe and we want to be sure that as we are going through this outbreak, we're doing the right thing for all of our family members. We have to date not been able to show that animals get the disease, get sick from the disease, and then spread the disease to humans by being shedders. There is no evidence of that. What we do know though is animals around sick people can get the virus on them, can get the virus in their mouths from licking, can get the virus in their bodies. How do we get that virus off of their coats? If they're in a household with people who have been sick. Decontamination is literally a technical term for a bath. This is a new kind of decontamination because what we're talking about is an animal that's in an environment that doesn't have a chemical or any other sort of dangerous substance that is in your house specifically. It's decontamination of that animal being next to you if you're sick and you're coughing or you're sneezing or if you're a person that likes to communicate very closely with your dog. And so once the animal is cleaned, he can be removed from that house and a caregiver can take care of that animal safely without having to worry about touching that animal and potentially having that virus go from that animal's coat to them. The first thing that we always have to remember when we give a bath to a dog in this environment is personal safety of the people doing the bathing then the safety of the dog, and then taking the dog out of that environment so that he doesn't get recontaminated by any of the surfaces or things that he's around. Our bodies can be protected very easily. You could put on a coverall that you take off immediately when you're done and put in the wash. You can put on rain suits that can be then completely washed off and decontaminated because they're plastic. You can put on a simply a poncho, or in the worst case scenario, a trash bag. Those things can be removed and you can get in the shower. If you aren't wearing gloves and you still wash the animal, you can decontaminate your hands before you do anything else and that will keep you safe. You should cover your shoes. That's not so much because we're worried about our shoes being a source of us, but if we walk away from wherever we were and we haven't covered our shoes or we don't have a pair of rubber boots on that we can just take off and decontaminate, then we can potentially track it around. And so we're talking about face protection, we're talking about body protection, hand protection and feet protection, but the most important is up here. Now we need to protect the dog. It doesn't matter how nice the dog is, how friendly the dog is, every dog should have some kind of a muzzle, and the muzzle should not be tight. A lot of dogs like to pant when they're getting a bath. If it's too tight, they can't pant. That makes them a little bit more anxious. And under this circumstance, with what we don't know what this dog is carrying, we absolutely do not want people to get bit. The next thing that we need to do is protect their eyes. And so by doing what we do in any anesthetized patient, we put eye lube into their eyes. The whole idea behind it is so the soap doesn't get in their eyes because that can be very, very irritating and can actually cause damage to the cornea or the clear surface of the eye. If you're in a home environment, just use the top area um, or a, a shower area because it can be decontaminated. But if you have a situation or a circumstance where you're setting up an emergency animal shelter, then you're gonna to have to be a little more creative. One of the things that we have done on the vet team is we've created temporary bathing areas and they include rubberized animal water troughs. And they come in two sizes. They are easily cleaned, they have drain holes in the bottom, and they come in a size where it's deep and where there's a shallower version for the food. And it works really, really great if you put those together. What you can do then is put drain holes, drill drain holes in the bottom of that shallower one that allows you as the bather not to be bending over. If you have to bathe a number of animals and you're bending over for many, many hours, you're gonna hurt yourself. It's gonna become hard to do and it's hard, harder for you to control the animal in that position. By putting the holes in the bottom, it allows the water to get away from the pet. By having it go into the tub in the bottom, that also collects it so it can go to a drain so that you don't have this contaminated water pooling anywhere and the surface is safe, it's not slick, and it can be reused over and over and over again because you can decontaminate it. If you're doing this bathing in an outdoor area, you're spraying this all around into the environment, and, and that's a harder thing to control and a harder thing to clean. And so if you put a tent around or some kind of similar structure that can be cleaned, that's actually a much safer way to sort of manage that contamination problem. Everybody knows how to wash it off but it's incredibly important for this to be systematic. 
head to tail, top to bottom. That goes with the wetting process, that goes with the soaping process, and that goes, of course, with the rinsing process, and it's just systematic. And the reason for that is you will leave material behind. We've done some studies in dogs, and the bottom line is that in the average short-coated dog, it will take you eight to 10 minutes and as much as 10 to 12 gallons of water. It's important not only to get the coat wet, because that's what helps the soap, but it's important to use the blue dish soap because it's ultra concentrated and it's very good surfactant. It will gather anything that's on the coat into itself. So then as you remove the soap, whatever's in the coat will come off of the coat. But it's also critical to get that soap off of them because that soap does not kill virus. It's just capturing it so you can remove it. And then it's super important to make sure those toes are clean and in between underneath because those are the places that get left underneath the chin, in between the armpits, in between the back legs, in between the toes. If it's under 75 degrees and you're bathing them outside, it's really ideal for you to be using a warm water source. If you don't have a warm water source, to immediately towel dry them and get them into a warm location and dry them. Now, this is an outdoor decontamination station and the temperatures are above 80. People will not be able to work in these rain suits with all of this PPE on, on this protective gear on, more than 20 or 30 minutes at a time before they can need to take a break and get out of it. If you're doing a decontamination line, we recommend a minimum of two, and in a dog that's being super squirmy, a three-person job, one to hold and two to do the work, one on each side. If you're in a shelter situation and all of a sudden you are inundated with a lot of animals that need to be de decontaminated, you're gonna have a great need for volunteers that you can train to do this. It is very labor intensive. When you're ready to take him out of the tub, if he's being a cooperative dog and it, there's no risk to you to take the muzzle off, take the muzzle off and then using a towel or using a washcloth or using some sort of paper product that you can moisten, wipe, moisten and wipe the muzzle area and the face area. You're not gonna scrub it but you want to wash off those areas the best you can, and it's usually more accepted by most dogs if you hand wipe that. I want to emphasize, if you have a dog that is unaccepting of that, you just have to accept the fact that you're not gonna be able to wash that area. It's surface cleaning, but we can't put the soap in these areas, and we can't put chemicals in these areas. So now our dog is clean. You've removed him from the tub, you've dried him off, Put him in a carrier or kennel um, to dry or to take him away, take him to a secure place that's clean. Once that has happened and you're ready to remove all of you, all of the PPE you've donned, in the process of this, leave your protection on for your face. It's a really good idea to either wipe down with a bleach solution, or it's a really easy thing to set up a baby pool with a pressure sprayer in it, and the pressure sprayer contains a one to 10 bleach solution in it. That bleach solution can then be sprayed on your raincoat or your whatever poncho you're wearing and your boots. And then you remove them and you set them in the baby pool to dry and, and you step out and then you take bleach wipes or you take other kind of disinfectant or you wash your hands really good. Then you remove your face shield, you remove any of your headgear, wash your hands again sterilize the surfaces of those products so you can use them again with a, with a bleach wipe. If you're ready to stop this process and you're ready to go back into the world and do your regular things, take a shower. Put new clothes on and you're good to go. One of the things we all understand about cats is they're not like dogs. If you have a cat that you've bathed before and, and the cat is completely okay with the water and completely okay with bathing, the process is entirely the same with the exception is we don't put muzzles on cats, but they still need the eye lubricant. They still need the front to back, top to bottom process. They still need the same kind of soaping. If you have a cat that needs to get a bath, you really, really do need to contact your veterinarian and, and try to get that process done with veterinary supervision. And the reason for that is, is we don't want to turn this into a harmful or dangerous thing for the people trying to bathe the animal or the cat itself. That's gonna be very, very important in these shelter situations to have veterinarians involved if there are cats that need to come in for decon. Let's say you have a cat that has been in an environment with a person that's gotten ill, needs to come out of that environment, there's no veterinarian available. One of the things that we have implemented here at the vet school is a wiping procedure. And part of the reason we have done that, it's not that we can't bathe them or we can't sedate them, 
But a lot of the animals that come to us are coming on an emergent basis. And so the last thing on the planet that we want to be doing at that moment in time is, is sedating them to bathe them. And so one of the things that we've instituted is taking, a, doing a wiping procedure with water from head to toe, top to bottom again. You could use um, a, a dishcloth or anything of the like, get it really, really, really wet, and then wipe the coat front to back, wash it really good, wipe the coat front to back and top to bottom. That is not as good as having soap involved, but it is a step process that you can use. If you have a, a pocket pet in a house of an individual that's gotten ill and they've been in close contact, the, probably the safest thing to do is to take them to a veterinarian or someone that is very, very comfortable with pocket pets so that they can get the proper care. So I hope discussing these processes that we've talked about today, bathing dogs, wiping cats, thinking about protecting yourself, has brought some peace of mind for you as you deal with this COVID outbreak that we're all dealing with. Not worry about your pets, but understand there are things you can do to keep them safe and to keep you safe as we work our way through this process.